Sure, we, well, we might as well leave it on and then you can decide to use it or not. It's your project, you do what you want. Yeah. I'm just here to look pretty and talk about serial killers. <laughs> yeah, that's, that you are. <laughs> Welcome to this documentary about the life of Mary Ann Cotton. Uh, I'm here with Holly. Hi. I nearly hit her in the face earlier. You did. So, do you know much about Mary? Uh, I know a little bit. I know she was um, of the Victorian era and like she was a uh, baby farmer, I do believe. Either that or she just killed babies. Some Somewhat, yeah. Babies and murder. <laughs> we'll get into that now, won't we? As this very uplifting tale of deaths and marriage and children. Uh, so, yes, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in this story. So, sure. Let's begin. Mary Ann Robinson was born on the 31st of October 1832 to Michael and Margaret Longsdale in Low Morrisley, Durham County, England. At age 16, she would become a nurse for a few years before returning home to become a dressmaker. I just heard someone scream downstairs. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully Mary hasn't come to haunt us. Mary was described as being strikingly beautiful for the times, as well as a kind and care. She would eventually meet and marry a man called William Morbury in 1852, and would have eight or nine children with him. <laughs> yeah, eight or nine children, which like... What was the average for back then? I'm guessing it must be around that many, but yeah. like, that is a lot of children for, you know, it's like, can you imagine that? No, I, I don't want to. <laughs> Me too. Uh, that sounds like hell. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, like, two kids is kind of annoying. Eight or nine? Do you know, no wonder she killed many of them. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> God, imagine the sibling rivalry. Oh, God. <laughs> Over the next couple of years, most of the children died, as was common for the time, leaving only three when they moved to Hendon around 1856. William would soon get life insurance for him and the three kids, which soon came in use as William died of gastric fever. In 1864, two of the children followed soon after. With the deaths came the life insurance money, which Mary took before leaving her daughter in her mother's care. This is beginning to I sound a bit murdery, Tom. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a trend here. I, yeah. I wonder if that trend will carry on. I mean, it's not like all female serial killers kill their spouses for the life insurance. Yeah, and uh, I wonder... I could name, like, three off the top of my head that have done exactly that. <laughs> uh, can you guess how long it will take them to find out? <laughs> oh, uh, years. Years and years. The, yep. the police back in the Victorian era were shit. Mary went back to work as a nurse and in 1865 would marry George Ward, a patient she was looking after in the hospital. He died the following year, and she once again collected the money from his insurance. Oh, gastric fever, that's interesting. Yeah, Wasn't that... her first husband, didn't her first husband die of gastric fever? Yeah, well? and so did her children. Hmm. Mm. And she's that, a nurse? That, that's such a coincidence. I mean, it, it's not like you can... It's not like you can induce gastric fever through arsenic. In 1866, she began working for a widower named James Robinson. She was his housekeeper, and mere weeks after her arrival, one of his children died of gastric fever, just like Mary's husband and two children. In 1867, she returned to her mother's. Let me guess, she... her mum died? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> After a short time span, Mary and her daughter has moved in with Robinson, where her last daughter died, along with two more of Robinson's children. She would soon marry Robinson. They would have two <laughs> children. Hey, all my children and dad, you want to get hitched? <laughs> <laughs> and they would have two children together although only one of which survived. In 1869, Robinson noticed that Mary was stealing from him via selling valuables at pawn shops. He also began to notice 
the amount of deaths that occurred around her. Hmm. Can you guess what he did? Died? Nope. Well, divorced her and then died, I assume. Surprisingly, no, he oh. didn't. <laughs> so... I would. That's hopefully. because you're smart. <laughs> Some accounts say that she noticed his suspicion and left. Or, more likely, she was thrown out, becoming homeless. In 1870, she would meet another widower named Frederick Cotton, who was a friend's brother. In keeping with Mary's reputation, Frederick's sister and youngest child died the same year they met. And how long does he survive for? Uh, well, they soon got married that year. Oh, okay. Clearly he didn't notice that aura of death surrounding her. <laughs> what is it? What is it with people like, oh, my entire family's dead, but at least I've got you, Mary. Yeah, it's kind of like, <laughs> what, how frequently were people dying at this time? Like, you know, think of like... A lot of serial killers around in the Victorian era, to be I know, but you not. probably then would go, oh, all of these people died? Hmm, aren't you a serial killer? Not I mean, just... it's also like, yeah. today in the age of information, it's a lot easier to find out. You just Google your spouse's name and, and it's like, <laughs> hey, this person's uh, th this person's got a lot of dead people surrounding them. And you'd be like, yeah. oh, probably shouldn't marry this person. Yeah. It, back in the Victorian so era, it's sort of like, hey, has anyone died mysteriously no. around you? Nah. No. No. Yeah. On top of that, she was officially still married to Robinson. The following year, she had two children, both dying, giving her more insurance payout, as well as her getting together with a former lover named Joseph Natress and becoming pregnant with another man named John Quickmanning. Which sounds like a move you pull on someone. <laughs> Gonna do a quick manning. <laughs> Well, that's how we got her pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did a quick manning on her. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> Mary got what Lil Natras owned when he died in 1872, as he left it to her, clearly still caring about her in some form. Due to her child with quick manning, it was assumed she would marry him, as that was expected. However, she said she couldn't was of her seven-year-old stepson, Charles Edward Cotton, and was quoted as saying to an official, I won't be troubled long. As you may expect, he died not long after, and this made the official suspicious of her earlier statements. He alerted the police. The police are like, hmm, there may be something here. There might be a connection here. I want, but I just can't see it. <laughs> they performed an autopsy on the boy's body and discovered that within his stomach was arsenic. This led to them exhuming the bodies of Natras and two of Cotton's children, discovering that they all had traces of arsenic within their stomachs. Yeah, he had uh, arsenic. Uh, arsenic. 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 Sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> Arsenic. Arsenic. <laughs> As you can guess, she was soon arrested and charged with the murder of Charles Edward Cotton. However, they didn't charge her for any of the other deaths that had occurred around her. In January 1873, while still in prison, she gave birth to a daughter. Not uh, another one, <laughs> fuck's sake. This was reportedly her 13th child. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> The girl was one of two of Mary's children to outlive their mother. In March, Mary's trial began, where the defense claimed that the victims died from inhaling arsenic dust from the dyes used on the wallpapers. This was a seemingly strong defense, as arsenic could be found in many household items. However, due to the amount of deaths that had occurred around her, and the fact that she had gained a loss from almost all of them. She was found guilty and was sentenced to hanging. There had been some question on if Dr. Kilburn... Like, his last name is literally Kilburn. <laughs> it's like, that sounds so ominous. <laughs> I'd rather him than Harold Shipman, though. I don't know who that is, so, uh... Oh. So, sure. England's most prolific serial killer. Alright, this is why you're on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the serial killer nerd, hi. Yeah, you love all things serial killer. <laughs> Dr. Kilburn had taken some medicine bottles that had contained arsenic during a police examination of her house looking for evidence. 
he obviously denied so, and no evidence was found to prove or disprove this. Mary was executed in a bundle execution on March 24th, 1873, where the executioner was notoriously clumsy, as well as the trap door not being high enough to break her neck. This led to the executioner pushing down on her shoulders for three minutes before she died at age 40. Her death was described by onlookers as her being strangled like a rabid dog with no dignity, even in death. Also, like, that whole thing with the executioner, it feels like a dark comedy bit. <laughs> it does! <laughs> Just like this very clumsy executioner. I don't know why, but I'm now picturing him as the same executioner from, um... Oh, what was it called? Ah, oh, it was that Western parody thing. How, how are you, worship? Mary never admitted to killing anyone, leaving how many she did a mystery to some degree. Some have even argued that she may have never killed anyone. She's just unlucky, Your Honor. <laughs> so it seems legit. Yeah. Innocent. Now, obviously, I think we both believe she did definitely kill people. I don't, I don't just believe it. It's like, it's like <laughs> she offered, there's at least 20 people dead, I think. Kill count. Yeah. There's at least 20 people dead. How did she not kill her? She definitely killed um, at least one or two. And the, yeah. the fact they all died of gastric. Gastric fever or That's arsenic. Yeah. Well, so, well yeah. yeah, both. It's something <laughs> So yeah, so uh, that was the life of uh, Mary Ann Cotton. The life and many deaths of Mary Ann Cotton. Oh, overall, she is believed to have killed 21 people. Hey, at least 20, I was right. So yeah, um, and yeah, so uh, moral of the story, don't have nine children or they'll drive you to murder. <laughs> <laughs>